the misinterpretation of scripture. So one of the things that can help people is that if you find something in the Old Testament, you find it again in the uh, Gospels, and then you find it again in the Epistles. And that gives you three witnesses that it belongs to us today. Now, uh, here in Philippians chapter 4, a lot of people will quote Philippians 4.19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But that's not where this starts. In right. verse 14, it says, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now, some people think affliction means sickness or disease. It doesn't mean that at all. And a lot of times the word affliction means, you know, uh, troubles or different kinds of situations that we get into. And Paul certainly ran into trouble as he went into different nations. And 90% of his problems were the same kind of problems that Jesus had was with the Jewish people. See, because they wouldn't believe and they would steer up other Jews and the Gentiles to come against him. But here he said, notwithstanding, you have well done that you did communicate. Communicate means giving uh, certain things, uh, helping with my affliction. The affliction, like I said, means uh, troubles, or it could be lack of finance or lack of what he needed to get the gospel. Right. Okay? And I think that's what it means right there. Mm -hmm. Now, verse 15, it says, Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. In other words, all of the churches that Paul started and helped, only the Philippian church was helping him. That's what he's saying. See? He's saying, now you Philippians know also that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. See? For even in Thessalonica, while he's over there in Thessalonica, right? Mm -hmm. You sent once and again under my necessity. Why didn't the Thessalonians take care of him? No, the Philippians were taking care of him while he's ministering to the Thessalonians who are tightwads, cheapskates. Okay, now, verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So when people give into the gospel, it's not just giving and receiving as we see it in, in a, a monetary way, but it's also counted in heaven towards the things of the gospel. And what's going on with the gospel? So we're not partaking of the gospel if we don't do that. So then he says in verse 18, but I have all. He said, I have all. And abound. I'm full. Having received from Ephrodite the things which were sent from you. And then he says, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. Well pleasing to God. Then he said, I said, then he said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. It didn't come just automatically. It came because of giving. And here we're talking about, uh, you know, the tithes, the offerings, and that kind of stuff. So that's a vital part of the ministry. And here, Paul's saying that there was very limited in their giving in these other churches. He did a long teaching in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, chapter 9. I believe 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and chapter 9. Let me look at it just to make sure. <clears throat> Concerning the giving there. Yeah, 2 Corinthians. Listen to what he's saying. Uh... He calls it, here he calls it a grace. Okay? In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, he says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Well, what are we? We're rich in faith, rich in grace, rich in mercy. No, we're rich in several things. Yeah. I have a long message on that one. You know? 
And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you uh, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. For therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also of that which you have. Of that which you have. Got that? For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to a man hath, and not according to hath not. So you wouldn't be giving beyond your capacity, beyond your ability. In other words, you wouldn't put yourself in debt to give into the church. Okay, like today we have credit cards. You wouldn't use a credit card to give into the church. You give out of your income. Now, for I mean not that other men be eased and you be burdened, but by equality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply to their want, that their abundance also may be a supply to your want, that there may be equality. And here he was collecting money to give to the poor saints at Jerusalem. Now in chapter 9, and beginning with verse 6, he said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So, you know, if you choose to just give small amounts, then you're going to reap small amounts. If you choose to give large amounts, you know, you have to give what you can give. But there was times when I, you know, uh, uh, my faith was limited at 500. But I finally gave a thousand, you know. And we've, uh, we've uh, done that more than once, haven't we? You know, now, <clears throat> verse 7, it said, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace, he calls it a grace, see? Right? Make all grace abound toward you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things, not some things, right. all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he that is disp uh, hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. Notice God's language. <laughs> Bountiful. Bountifulness. Amen. You know? All bountifulness. Which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the one of the saints, but uh, is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. While uh, by the experiment of the administration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution. In other words, dis uh, 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 distributing Funds to help them, right? Distribution there. The liberal, uh, that's what the, well, I don't want to say it. Um, <laughs> some of the politicians are very liberal with our money, but they give it to the enemy. <laughs> you know? Right. Now, sure. and for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men. <clears throat> then, uh, verse 14, it said, and by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you, this grace of giving, right? Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift, talking about Jesus. Amen. See, we can't fathom the value of Jesus. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. And so when we give, we don't give grudge.